Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of Midweek Matters. I am joined by Charlie White. Charlie, how are you? Interesting cap. Not a fan of the cap. Uh, I mean, look, it's okay. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks for building me the confidence just as soon as the show started. I appreciate mm. that. Yeah. You know? I was going to say, you look a bit tired as well yourself. Do you? Uh, look, you've just woken up, even though it's one o'clock in the afternoon. No, it was a bright and early this morning. Too early. Is that what you're tired? <laughs> no. 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 Been for a run down at Cronulla. Yeah. Walked nice. to school. Walked to school. Walked to Hang school. Hang around schools again. <laughs> oh, no, walked my children <laughs> to school. Ah, nice. Um, nice. Been to the gym. Yeah. Now I'm here. Nice. Good on you, mate. Yeah. Sounds like a busy you've, day. You've drained my energy. <laughs> Straight away. Straight away. Just What's happening, in. though? What are you up to apart from that? Life's good. Life is very good. How are you going back from Bali? Survived? Yep. Oh, that's good, mate. That's good. Bali was fine. I'm more interested though in today's Rockbusters because I haven't we haven't done Rockbusters for a little while. Can I just say I, something about you and Bali? Yeah, you, you haven't come back with much of a tan. Well, I've been back for a while now, and I mean, talking about tan coming from you. No, no, no. But like, this, you're as white as a ghost. We I, have to turn the lights down just so we can see you. Yeah, no. You know? But I think like that's okay because I'm a ginger. Yeah, you expect you're, more you're from a, me. You're a person that usually tans. So mm. what that tends to suggest mm. is that you didn't see much sun, sunshine. Well, I wasn't lying in the sun. I was seeking shelter where possible. And I was also traveling with two gingers actually. Mm. Two gingers were with me. So I'm a man. Well, of you want like a, you know, a well, nomination for Australian of the Year. Well, I mean, I, I was being a good person. I was like, I'm not going to leave them sitting alone in the shade, the two, you know, sad, miserable-looking gingers in this beautiful, you know, tropical paradise, and they're stuck under the trees, stuck mm. under the tent. What people know? tend to do with me is, like, they let me, you know, I'll go in the shade, they go in the, the yeah, sun. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I like to, you know, I'm an empathetic person. You know that mm. about me. You've always said that. Mm. Um, so I had to, like, you know, live as though I was a ginger. Yeah, that's what we can yeah. 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 And but I'll tell you what, we'll, like you know, Bali's cheap and whatnot. How much do you reckon like a bottle of sunscreen goes for in Bali? Um, three dollars, thirteen dollars for a small bottle of sunscreen, which is like you can go to like a nice restaurant and get like the main for ten bucks in Bali, but mm -hmm. they're charging sunscreen for thirteen bucks. It was blew me away. Did it? Yeah, <laughs> it's a great holiday story, that mate. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you've come back with, then I feel sorry for those two gingers that went with you. Yeah. Like you, you what, you're one of those people that are astounded mm. by something like that. I, I mean, I think it's worth bringing up like, oh, that's a bit, but I don't think it's worth bringing back to Australia with you. On a podcast as yeah, well. Yeah, talk about a podcast. Yeah. Like, I reckon you just keep that one, you know. In the back in the back pocket. Maybe, you know, what, what a smart person does is maybe opens up a, a sun lotion store and charges ten dollars ten dollars maybe that can be business my opportunity plan. hello buy round store oh what's going on in here podcast studio no just sell sunscreen i did see brad bradman best when i was over in bali he was sort of dancing up on a night floor at a nightclub luigi's oh yeah he looks like he's made for bali mm. like you know tats well he did, bum bag. He, did, he did go there to get his tattoo, remember? Yeah, that was, he did, didn't he? Yeah, the cat that was the catalyst behind Newcastle's change in fortunes. It was and maybe then, you going to Bali would be the catalyst behind the buy round, the buy round, well, especially midweek matters change in fortunes. Yeah, fingers crossed. Mm. <laughs> uh, but Rockbusters, you've got one for us. I've I got believe, two. Don't you? Actually, I've got Perfect. one for you and one for our listeners. So Do you know what? Because we're sort of getting towards the end of the year, we've got a few weeks ago. Why don't we give them like whoever gets this Rockbuster can not only have a buy round t shirt, but can also have a Tui's cap as well. Oh. So it's like. It doesn't get much better than that. They'll be racking their yeah. brains. So, trying to so what, what do I do? Do you want to do my one first or the listener's one? Uh, I'll do your one first. Okay. Um, a heavyweight boxer's liquid breakfast. A heavyweight boxer's liquid breakfast. I'm thinking eggs, raw eggs. Like, you know, boxers, they always knock the eggs back first thing in the morning. Mm. And I think I'm on the right track there. Mm. But like it's mm, yolk. Mm. Yeah. No. All right. well, I'll, I'll let you just that. sit on yep. that one. Uh, the one for the listeners. Um, these drugs are the perfect colour. These drugs are the perfect colour. Okay. Pharmaceuticals. Medication. Medicine. You're just Medicine saying words. words now, aren't you? <laughs> um, let, you know, that, that yeah. one's for the listeners. So Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, you know, now you're thrown in the cap. Yeah, you think you should have gone harder or made it more challenging? 
No, no. I mean, they're just going to be clamoring. Just like, oh, what does he mean? Yeah. Where's well, he been before? Good luck. Be I'd throw in of? another pair of Tui socks, but they're all at my house. Yeah, now, yeah the Tui socks. Okay. Yeah. But, but first topic then, Jimmy. NRL player movement. It's, it's starting to heat up a little bit. We saw, obviously, Luai's now been offered that four-year Tigers offer, which mm. is massive money, but also uh, you'd probably say for the Tigers he could be worth it. It's a four-year, $4.4 million offer. Um, and the, the, a lot of the journos are now saying that's sort of the, the odds on favour. The Tigers are now the favourites to get him. Yeah, well, I believe that um, he idolised Benji Marshall and this is one of the advantages of bringing Benji into that head coaching role is that he has a, a strong affiliation with a certain age, uh, with a certain age demographic of people playing the game. They idolise that man mm. and that is one of the big draw cards. And I think in terms of Jerome Luai, like 1.1 a year, to move clubs, like that's a sort of ballpark. I, I might sound crazy, but or people may disagree. I think he's worth more. Yeah, because to one, move clubs to to, I think he's worth more, especially with the increase in the salary cap. Yeah. You know, one point one isn't what it was mm. a couple of years ago. It's act, it's a bit. It's probably more of like a nine fifty style yeah. deal. Yeah, like I thought he'd be. I think he can probably get 1.25 even. Yeah. That's what I think he yeah. should be looking for from the Tigers anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you think back to the Tigers, didn't they offer Latrell Mitchell over a million mm. when he was yeah. leaving the few Roosters? Years ago, yeah. Yep. Like, I think they even offered like 1.2 1. maybe yeah. even, yeah. Well, well, that was an, an, an old yeah. salary cap as well. Like, you know, if you look at like the, the top earners in the game, a lot of those are at their – their parent club. Yeah. Well, Pong is on, Pong I think is the highest paid player. He's on 1.4. Yeah. So I don't think Luai is worth 1.4. I think that'd be a mistake by the Tigers to pay 1.4. No, no, he's he, he's not. But then to, to, to for him to move, mm. then that's where you've sort of got to be. Like Pong had stayed at his parent club. club. Yeah. You know, Nathan Cleary stayed. Cameron Munster stayed. Like all the, the big money players mm. like Payne has stayed. Yeah. Like you think about you, you've got but Munster pick. could have got, he could be the high, if he went, took the Dolphins off, he'd be yeah. the highest paid player in the game, Cam Munster, or one yeah. of the highest paid players. He, he took he, unders to stay yeah. at Melbourne compared to what he yeah, could have got. What he could have got. But I think, well, yeah. So generally speaking, a, a player that wants to stay would be paid less. But so you obviously have to pay more mm. to get them to move. Yeah. M you know, most, the overwhelming majority of the time. Yeah. And I think with Jerome Luai, with everything that he would, would bring, I think he's worth more than 1.1. Mm. Do you think it would be a big, could be a big mistake for him in his career though? Moving to the Tigers, go from the premiership, the premiership winner of the last three years to a team that has been the Wooden Spoon winners, you know, it's, and it's a club that, I mean, even even the fact that they're going for Luai sort of shows in my opinion that their plan around roster management is still, they're still working out on the fly. It's like they feel they need that big kill to silence the media for some reason because they've already signed Latu Fine, who's meant to be one of the gun future halves. They've brought in Jane Sullivan on a long-term deal and they've got obviously Caesar there who's probably just going to fill a gap, you know, for a little bit of time. But it's like what's their actual plan? Do they need another half? Do yeah. we they've got as well? You know? Yeah, we forget about yeah. it. I, th I think – yeah, I think they they do need a big kill, and I think Jerome Luai would be a, a great signing from them, for them. Um, obviously, they've signed those younger players, and they've still got C Caesar. Likely won't play too long into the future. Uh, Adam Dewey, you know, you could uh, you could play somewhere else in the back line, but I think for Jerome Luai, you know, the, the clubs that are going to come in from the the Tigers, the Dogs. You know, you, you know, on the surface, on the, on the face of it, you go, well, yeah, of course it's a step back from the Panthers and where they are at now. But, you know, that financial incentive to move and the opportunity to build your own, you know, a, a club around you. And, you know, Jerome has been a, a magnificent footballer. But, you know, the, the it will be how he... he he won it because he was partnering Nathan, and this mm. will be a fantastic opportunity for Jerome to run his own team mm. and 
there's plenty of upside to go into these clubs as well. And the, and the clubs sell it really well as well. Yeah. Like, make no mistake that this isn't just Benji rocking up to his house and you know, having a chat. There's this thought that would go in to how you would sell the vision of the Tigers and what this could do for Jerome Luai's legacy. Mm. Like, he's won three premierships. Like, yeah. Imagine if he won, wins a, a fourth at another club and it's yeah. his team and he's wearing the number seven. Imagine if they win the wooden spoon, though, again. Well, you know, I, I guess the, the, this, this is all part of the, the thoughts that will be spinning around Jerome's head. Because Penrith aren't doing, uh, like, a ton of favours for Jerome Luai's legacy either. I mean, the, to come out in the public and sort of say that he's not worth more money than I think it's... Another executive came out recently and said he's not, like, you know, they're not sure he's worth more than... The amount they're willing to give him, I think. I think that says to me that maybe the Panthers are resigned to the fact that he's possibly going. Well, well, that, that's that he's not worth more than that to them. Yeah. So there's give and take, and and players are worth different amounts at different clubs. Your parent club, based on the current situation and the roster that they have, like he he isn't worth more no. than that at Penrith. And if you look at like roster management in general, if they've got Nathan Cleary as a really high paid half, you can't, you don't really want to have your salary cap have two really high paid halves. You want to be able Generally, to spread that money yeah. about, about it. Mm. And I mean that, like if you look at what Nathan Cleary did, that little run they made at the end, I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened if Lua was on the field, but that little run come back in the grand final, um, Lua was on the bench. So I'm sure Nathan yeah. Cleary, who I think will be an immortal one day, you can pretty much put, a lot of five eights next to him, and they're still going to be a, com a competitive yeah, team. Yeah, and and that's the parents have got the evidence for that, so they would go well. We can put money into other areas mm. of the squad mm. that, you know, or, or give players upgrades that are already in the system that are, that have earned it. You mm. know, and you're not going to be able to keep everybody happy. That's one of the unfortunate consequences of a salary cap sport. I'm sure parents would l love to keep. Stephen Crichton, they would have loved yep. to have kept Matt Burton. They would have loved to have kept Dappy Corusau. The list goes on. Kick out. Yeah. You know, kept... I'm sure they'd love to keep Luai as well. Yeah, they I'm tried sure they, to yeah. negotiate with him at the start of mm. uh, this year, 2023. They tried to get it finalised. They just haven't been able to because yeah. Luai's obviously not happy with the money. On the well, counter... I don't, I don't think it's that he's not happy with the money. You reckon it's more than just the money? I don't think it's the, the case of not being happy with it. Yeah. I think it's just like, well, let's just... Let's see what else see, yeah. yeah but the money is also wrapped into the ego a little bit as well it's yeah. like if you see other players on a million dollars a year and you yeah. think you're that sort of a player you want that money don't you mm, of course of course yeah. and he's a, he's a he's a young man and when when you're an athlete you, you you do stress about what your earning potential will be you feel like you're in a small window um and Although you're not playing the game for money, it's 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 part of the game now. The, the, there's no hiding from that. It, it it really is part of the game. So, you know, Jerome, he'd look at his three premierships, tick those boxes. But then, you know, maybe it's not even about the legacy as a player. It's legacy for, for his family, mm. you know, and his, his loved ones, extended family to be like, well, I'm going to provide for you guys now. That, that, that could be a... A huge motivating factor and then you couple that in with you know maybe i could have my own team mm. be it play play in the seven jersey you know the, the, there's there's more to that i don't think it's a case of not being happy i don't like that 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 phrase yes yeah. you know just before we move on from luai do you think he's the kind of player that could turn the tigers around so is he the kill that they need or are they maybe, do they need to maybe be a bit more patient and wait for that next player to come available? Because I actually think the Tigers would be much better off going really hard at Tom Dearden. Mm. And if Tom Dearden played for a Sydney club, you best believe he'd be in the headlines a lot more than he is. Because yeah. he's in the Cowboys, he's a bit out of, out of sight, out of you know mind. Yeah, you, you, you could be right there. That is... Obviously, up at the Cowboys, they're really good. Twenty twenty two, not so good last year, but with the consistency, like if you're a Tigers fan, what are you going to be more excited about? 
if you're a Tigers player, mm. what are you going to be more excited about? And that's not to say that the Indian wouldn't bring that and you know, there'd be aspects of, of, of weighing up who, who you'd go for. But with the Tigers, they probably need that, that PR, that kill, that they're, they're in big for Jerome. We'll wait and see on that. But something that looks like it's pretty much a done deal, Kirk Cape will go into the, Bron- uh, go into the Warriors yeah. immediately I mean, as well. No. And that's your man Ben Dobbin reporting that one. Oh. So could be true, could be wrong. Pinch of salt needed. Yeah. So he's been given permission to leave the club is what he's saying. Um, he'll join the Warriors. They have obviously lost Josh Curran, so it'll be a good yeah. player for them to bring in. Got a, start, they've got a very good back row when you think about the Warriors. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, Jackson Ford was a revelation yeah. there. Nick will raise a gun. Yeah. Gets suspended a lot, but he's a fantastic player. Yeah. Um, a big loss for the Broncos. I'm surprised, man. Mm. Like I know they've um, upgraded and extended a lot of their younger players, but... Pierre Cura is the one that is going to start apparently yeah. next year. And he's a fantastic young player. But now you you look at it like the one thing that the, the Broncos maybe lacked was experience. They obviously had Adam Reynolds. I think that I think they'll miss Capewell. Bit of an unsung hero there. Mm. Um, doesn't do the flashy stuff, but does a lot of clean up work. Um, he's a winner, a proven winner, yeah. and he's got experience. And I think if you look at the circumstance of what happened last year, take that game away. You're going to need that. The, the, I, I think they're going to need experienced heads to to guide them through. There's a lot of pressure on Adam Reynolds to. To, to be that father figure again. And obviously those players are another year older and the leadership experience of people like Pat Carrigan and um, Payne Haas and, and a few others. But but I think Capewell's leadership skills and, and experience would have been so valuable this year. But, I mean, I guess the Broncos have made that decision and mm. the, the Warriors are on for a winner with him, but their back row looks very strong. Yeah, and, I mean, they obviously the Broncos also lose Herbie Farmouth and Tom Flegler. So it's mm. a few players that are leaving. I still think the Broncos are the team to beat next year with or without yeah. Capewell. Yeah, I, I do. But, you know, there's – I think on 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 paper, like, and and, and, and everything, they've got the, the strongest squad. Mm. But then this – it's emotionally how they respond from that. The other big news that's just sort of broken just before we started recording was it to- Connor Tracy is going to join the Bulldogs. You spoke about it a bit last week. It's actually going to be a player swap though for um, Gabriel Michael or Michael. Yeah, sorry, Michael Gabriel, I should say. He's a development player and he's just been promoted to the top 30 for the 2024. But the dog is going to send him to Cronulla and they're going to get Connor Tracy who has been sort of on the fr- a fringe first grader for Cronulla Sharks the last couple of years, but whenever he plays, he plays really well. Yeah, he's a gun. No doubt about it, he's a gun. Um, be interesting to see how he and where he fits in, because obviously with Blake Taff, you know, Drew Hutchinson, um, Stephen Crichton in there, um, Jared Salmon as well. There's a lot of that similar-ish kind of player. Kurt Mann, did you say Kurt him? Mann as yeah. well, yeah, yeah. Hutchinson? Um, Hutchinson, yeah, there's utility backs. There's mm, a lot of them, yeah. But I think what that will do, and I think what they're trying, what like I have no inside information on this, but I think they're going to look to 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 drive standards and have those people really com- compete against one another. Um, I really like the acquisition of Connor Tracy. Every time I've watched him play for the Sharks, I thought this this guy can play. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we just stuck behind Will Kennedy. Be interesting to see what how Cam Sorrell, though, looks to fit these players into the team. The issue for the Dogs is you talk about all those players is just now that the Takiaha deal's fallen over, who are their forwards or who are their middle forwards in particular? That's going to be the struggle yeah. for them. Yeah, like they haven't really brought anyone in of note. They've obviously brought Liam Knight in. Um, Josh Curran. Yeah, but he's more of an edge back rower, yeah. you'd say. Mm. Like who's going to... Who are going to be the middle forwards who can play 60 minutes, run for 180 metres each week? Yeah. I'm not sure. No, the, the, there's a couple of players who are perhaps on the fringe a little bit that I know um, on the inside of the club they've got high hopes for. Um, but I guess we'll see. I, I I wouldn't be surprised to see them still be active in the market to bring in a middle forward um, over the summer and get them up to speed. Um, Ray Fatilla Marino as well. It seems as though he's... Yep. On the settled. Way out. Oh no, but oh, I, think, I, think, I think they've 
they've settled their differences. Right. So a bit of a mindset and attitude shift from him. Um, should see him perform better. But but I guess it, it is the not the elephant in the room. It's it's there for everyone to see that they are light up front. Mm. Um and obviously losing to Vita Panga Jr., uh, Luke Thompson, the the two big dog middle forwards, which haven't really been replaced. Mm. But it's up to, up to some of those people to step up and assume that role. Or you go, I tell you what, lads, we're just going to work really hard as a as a unit, as a team, and we're not going to have that big alpha behind as our as our pack leader. You know, we're going to have we're just going to be savages as a team. We're just going to go after you. We're going to be relentless. You know, we're not going to have over-reliance on, you know, one particular player. We're just going to come at you and not stop. Maybe that's the part. Yeah, of the, sounds good in theory, but yeah, if you look at I mean, all the best teams, they've got gun they, front rowers. They generally yeah. tend to have at least one standout. Yeah. Um, but they, their edges look good with Curran, Kikau, yeah. and obviously Jacob Preston as well. There's just some, you know, some middle forwards are going to have to do a... A, a re really step up to the plate. And Curran's a big body, so he, he mm. could maybe transition into a, into playing the front row. I'm not sure. But Phil Gould, he's actually met with Fanua Blake. <gasps> Did you see they got photographs? <laughs> yeah, Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Shock. Was that you who took the pictures? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. On my Huawei. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love some of the headlines around that. It's like, yeah, he met him. Yeah, but he's the alpha who could lead the four pack. Obviously, yeah. this wouldn't be for twenty twenty four. This would be for twenty twenty five. He's staying at the Warriors next year. Mm. At this moment in time, you never know with those. You know, the Warriors might end up letting him go early. You just don't know. Mm. But he'd be the alpha that could lead that forward pack. Massive. Yeah, massive. I uh, be, be, I would be very excited to see him in the blue and white. Well, the New Zealand national team have decided to sack Michael Maguire. That is yes. official. So he's now not going to. Be the Warriors, uh, the New Zealand coach. He's also, at this moment in time, we don't know if he's going to be involved in the Canberra Raiders yet um, as an assistant coach. The, the the understanding is that he probably won't. It was actually a bit of an annoyance, I think, because his family lives in Sydney doing all that travelling. He's just going to focus on New South Wales. So there it is, the New South Wales coach, Michael Maguire. Yeah, it certainly, um, certainly looks that way. At, at first, I thought, oh, it's great. He can do all three jobs. And then I think one of the former Kiwis, um, Tony Kemp, maybe I read something that he, uh, when he spoke about the situation, he was like, yeah, of course he can't because of the eligibility rules, all that sort of stuff. It's, And I think it, it probably undervalues the Kiwi jersey. If he's, if he's, oh, sorry, not just the Kiwi jersey, but that position, it's got to be seen as like the pinnacle and it can't be shared. And you know what, I I tend to agree with that. So, look, I'm sure Madge would have been thinking he could have taken on both roles or, or all three perhaps, but I think it, it puts it puts prestige um, at the forefront of the Kiwi, Kiwi coaching, Kiwi jersey that we want to stand alone. And, um, yeah, actually, I think it's the correct move from the – from the – New Zealand would be league board. One of our listeners, uh, Josh Pryor, he sent actually an email in, which I hadn't really thought about personally, but it's actually a really good point he's made. He said, why are people only talking about two things when it comes to Madge? Him not being able to do both jobs at the same time and his conflict of interest with players having to choose a side. I think the glaring obvious issue that's not being discussed is that he would be essentially coaching one half of the kangaroos pathway system. Second to that, he was literally coaching full-time at club level while coaching the Kiwis for three years. So, but the main thing is, if he's coaching yeah. New South Wales, he's basically developing the next Kangaroos players while simultaneously coaching the Kiwis. I think it's a great point he makes. I don't know about developing well, Australian players. No, but, no, but finding those rep players. Because how often do you see a guy a player come in, dominate a rep level, and then go on to the, the Kangaroos, you know? Yeah. Like Liam Martin's an example of that. Like he did really well for New South Wales. And when he went to the World Cup for the Kangaroos, he would play so well. Yeah, that... that that by playing state of origin, it, you then therefore advantage Australia. Yeah, yeah. You that that's that is correct. You just get the, it is the, the one It's it's a huge advantage that Australia have that they represent that, that those players play in that um you know intense be or beyond intense arena of state of origin. They, that's 
that helps Australia. No doubt, no doubt, no two ways about it, Charlie. Mm. Mm. Um, but that's a, that's a great point. What was the listener's name? Josh again? Pryor. Josh Pryor, thank you. Yep. We get some really top quality insights from our guest uh, the other week. The other week, actually, um, uh, and a very attentive listener. Yeah, heard me sort of speaking about neighbours. Yes, although we can't tell the story. No, we're not going to tell a story. We can't, yeah, but thank you so that much. That was Jim. Jim. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Give us. Uh, Give us a bit of explanation and a bit of context around. Yeah. Maybe we could start a second podcast with like neighbors tea, just like yeah. little neighbors rumors. You could sort of host it. Yeah. Maybe you can. Maybe you could like even you could interview all the former neighbors. You could be like <sighs> the neighbors, the untold yeah. stories of neighbors. Just yeah, me and Doctor well, Carl. Yeah, Paul Robinson. Paul Robinson. Yeah, he, 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 you know what? Like Paul Robinson. Right? Is he a goodie? Is he a baddie? Who knows? It changed. Mm. Do you like him either way? If he's good yeah. or bad, is he that yeah. sort of a charming guy that like, you just sort of accept his... You know, the script writers all, let's make him really good. We fall in love with him. He's yeah. a reformed character and then bang, slips up again. Carl Kennedy always cheating on... Or not yeah. always, but yeah. cheating on his lovely yeah. wife, Susan. Was Susan, it Susan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Ca Dr. Carl. Carl. Yeah. Dr. Yeah, Carl. Dr. Carl. But then I always get confused. Then there's the Triple J Dr. Carl as well. I know. Well, I, when I'm like just a real doctor. doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why I didn't yeah. say Dr. Carl because mm. I didn't want to confuse people at home. Yeah. You know? Is he a real doctor? I don't know. Mm. You know, Kylie Minogue. Kylie that was Minogue. before my time, to be honest, mate. Yeah. Kylie, Kylie stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually still Toadfish going. is. Toadie. Toadie. Toadie yeah. Toadie's still, still going on. Yeah. yeah. He's probably still on the show. He's probably still on. Didn't kick on, did he? he was he's, a probably got, he's probably got one of those lifetime deals. <laughs> yeah. Like, got to be part of Neighbours. 50 but, bucks an episode. Yeah, just always, like, bringing him back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, back to the footy. <laughs> back to the footy. The NRL is going to – the NRL games in Vegas are actually going to be broadcast on US television. I know you're excited about this because it's something like 90 million subscribers to Fox Sports 1 in America, and it's going to be on primetime Californian time, which is – their biggest state, about 40 million people live there. So it's California it's a huge win for the NRL. knows how to party, Charlie. Um, <laughs> said Dr. Dre. <laughs> um, California. That's yeah. the song I was yeah. referring yeah. to. They play that a lot over in California. And it yeah. is a bit of an older song, but I don't yeah. mind it. Uh, in all seriousness, if that's happening, the stadium's got to be full. Got to be. Like, we have got to showcase this. Like, the uh, America, you, you learn quickly, they can, they know how to market sports mm. and they know how to, like, maximize do dollars, which is the reason it's going on to Fox Sports 1 and we get that casual fan. But if that doesn't look like it's important, and I use that phrase all the time, it's got to look like it's important. We're showcasing this sport to a brand new audience, that stadium for both of those games has to be full. Because if you're flicking through, if you're an, if you're the average American and you're flicking through, you turn on Fox Sports 1 because that's the main show. Oh, what's this new rugby sport? It looks, they don't really understand that there's a new one. Well, not, it's a huge difference between league and union. Mm. But for them, it would look sort of similar. This Australian sport, imagine they've got like images of AFL as well in there as well. Yeah. We can grasp that public, but it's got to get their attention and you get it, you get their attention by um, having a full crowd. I sound a little bit like David Brent there. Get <laughs> their attention. <laughs> You know what we could do to help with the full crowd? If there's any American listeners, do we do we buy them tickets and we get the buy around like, bay or, or, and then they all have to wear buy around merch though? Yeah. And you've got to be like as rowdy, lunatic as possible. Go in there and make there's as much an noise. probably an image that I'm, I'm like rowdy, lunacy. Okay, well, you don't want to be involved in rowdy and lunacy. What about um, not passion, passionate just, fans getting there, come on. wearing buy around, just maybe do buy around chats like, yeah. you know. We are the Byron, <laughs> the mighty Byron. <laughs> and we are mental. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's one of those <laughs> ideas we should probably bounce around a little bit. More. Yeah. Mate, Byron mate. Bay. It's good marketing play for like a, just a, non, mate, a normal NRL game. That's it. The Americans, game. that's it. Yeah. 
buy around Bay. We're, we're, next next thing you know, we're on Fox Sports. Yeah, exactly. All yeah. on our buy around teams yeah, having like, a good oh, time. Oh, what's that? Yeah. After check out that podcast. Yeah. And hopefully they turn into an episode, tune into an episode of Jam and Cheese. Not, not me with that, or yeah. even an interview. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, really or rugby league round table. Then they can start really. Yeah. The, going oh, then depth. you yeah. get get to the issues. We're going to take a quick break from this podcast to talk to you about AG1. Now, this is a product I've been taking for over a year now and I absolutely love it. It gives me all of my daily nutritional needs in one easy drink. All you have to do is put in one scoop of AG1 into a nice cold glass of water, and you are set for the rest of the day. The cupboard has been cleaned out of tablets and powders because all my needs are met by AG1. The power of routine cannot be underestimated, and we all know how small habits lead to big wins. Some of those big wins for me have included better gut health, my clarity, especially in the afternoon, has improved so much. Gone has the mid-afternoon slump. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement. Now, as humans, we all share that same basic foundational needs. That's where AG1 take care of everything. This supports your body's needs like nutrient replenishment, gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why they've been a partner and I've been a user for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. A buy round exclusive. If you try AG1, you get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag one dot com forward slash buy around for our exclusive Australia wide offer. Check it out. Well, Jimmy, just quickly, we're going to move on now from that and talk about the immortals because next year they're going to be announced. They're sort of starting the process of that now of like who's eligible, who's going to be up for it. But you've got the big names that stand out for me of the guys that are now available because they you have to be retired for five years to be eligible for an immortal. So you're not quite eligible just yet. You know, you're almost there. But Billy Slater Jonathan Thurston, See, Greg. retired five years. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? It's wild. It's gone by quick. I guess it's five years. Are you, you're, you're one of those guys that have got a really poor perception of time, haven't you? Oh, no. it's flown by. Or do you never have flashbacks of memories and go, oh, it feels like the other day? Mm, no. Like I can feel like I remember like the feeling of like when I broke my leg when I was four and it, it feels like yeah. the other day. And then you go, geez, life just like flies by in a flash, yeah. doesn't it? The, it's just one of those phrases that I really, it like makes my blood boil a little bit. Like, and I, I get it where you're like, oh, it, it, I, I can, yeah, basically when you have those feelings, you can recall it. Mm. It doesn't feel like yesterday. No, but I mean, I guess you can, it, you, it sucks I, you, you, you in. can almost time travel and take yourself back. Yeah, like I great. can do that a few times with, with certain points in my life. Yeah. I've got close my eyes. I feel like I'm there, but it never feels like it was, it was yesterday. Yeah. Well, recently we were actually together and you're like, oh, it feels like we've been here for two days when it was like a few hours. It was like, oh, it feels like we did that interview two days ago. So, like you're, long... so you normally say you're a good judge of a time, but you're not actually. Just back to my broken leg when I was four. It just made me remember something. So Shane Webke obviously broke his arm, played a, a game of footy. Yeah. Tough. Yeah, tough. Yeah. Sure, that's tough. But mm. he's like, you know, he's in his 30s at that stage. Getting paid you know, well. He's getting paid a lot of money to do it. You know? And he's got a lot of the pressures on him to mm. do that. Well, when I was four years old, I broke my leg, fell out of a playground. It mm. wasn't a proper, you know, like compound fracture, so you wouldn't have seen it, mm. but it was a broken leg. Mm. And I ended up walking on that broken leg for an entire day because my grandma thought I was bunging it on. Yeah. So I had a broken leg. My grandma thought I was bunging it on. And then mm. I walked around it for a full day, mm. got home and crawled myself up the stairs and just went to bed. <laughs> so that's toughness. Forget about Shane Webke, you know, he plays <laughs> with a broken arm. <laughs> Pathetic, I say. But um, <laughs> you cra- you, I just went to bed cracking up. Oh yeah, like which four year old puts themselves to well, bed? I did, mate. That's, this, like, that, that's, what, that's how tough I was. I crawled yeah, up the like, stairs uh, myself. I was, then, gonna, I was gonna call a night, grandma. <laughs> nah. No, well, this was. Nah, I might just tuck myself in. Don't worry about me. Nah. Well, see, my grandma, my grandma mm. actually dropped back my parents. So I was back with my parents, crawled up the stairs. My parents were like, that's odd. He's taking himself to bed at <laughs> five o'clock in the afternoon, and then they came and checked on me and took me to hospital. You know, because in the middle of the night, I think I woke up like. In a bit of pain. Yeah. But that's, you know, oh, it's toughness, so, isn't it? So tough, mate. That's so tough. tough. Maybe yeah. it's a bit of a, you know, the boy that cried wolf or always bunging it on and then when you actually wear it, hurt. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. They didn't believe me. Yeah. Because I drove past the playground when I was over. What, well, when you were four? No, when I was... <laughs> 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 with the oh, broken leg. Dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, bloody hell. You know, it's yeah. another random thing. When I was like seven years old, my Man. mum was pregnant and had a fall. Mm. And, I was, and I was like, I'll drive the car. That's what I said. I was seven. She's like, no, you won't. Yeah. yeah. This is a bit like that song. Once I was four, four years, years old, old, I broke my leg, leg on the floor. floor. And then I was seven and then yeah. I drove the car. Was this a dream that you had? No. No, this is actually reflection. Yeah. Although, speaking of dreaming... Oh, not to go. Not to Matt, go. I feel so bad for our listeners that are trying to get our opinion on who will think they're being next immortals. But yeah. go on, tell us about your dream. Well, no, I was reading this book. Uh, it's about like a habits book. But you know that um, people in America, well, not people in America, but this is just was an American story. But if, you, if you're a big sleepwalker mm. and you have a night terror at the same time as sleepwalking, you can end up like murdering someone in your sleep. And like there, so there was this incident where a man um, – strangled his wife but he thought he was strangling an attacker because he was sleepwalking having a night terror at the same time and it happens like a lot and mm. then you get found not guilty because of that mm. which is which is because they're saying it, it you're not in control of your habits like you're just mm. you're not actually there mm. you know what that be my i call bs I, and not to make light of a very serious yeah uh, it seems suspicious it, it 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 does if that's your that, yeah. that's your excuse or your reason i mean i'm sure that to be an expert that be that that would back them up in a court of law. Yeah, but, it, yeah I mean, it was in the book. It talked about mm, like all the sleep experts. Who, just every, all our, well, you know, if anyone's wanting to pop someone off, <laughs> you know, like, oh, what? How do you get away with murder? Oh, you know, you've got the ice bullet or the ice bow that you know, yeah, you shoot them. But this is like, you know, just you can imagine like a few of our listeners tonight just walking around, going, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm sleepwalking, love, sorry, and then they keep doing that. Or they write it down. They tell all their mates go see the doctors. Yeah, twelve months later. Boom. Sorry for taking us off course there as well. Back yeah. to the immortals. Massively off course. So the immortals. And, so yeah, Billy Slater five, has been, been retired for five yeah. years. Do you know what? Greg Inglis is there. I love Greg Inglis. We'll work with him. I don't know if he's going to be an immortal. Just um, I think he'll probably miss out. Like he's one of the greatest players the game's ever seen, but I don't think he's necessarily at the immortal level. Maybe just for, you know, I don't, uh, just the amount of premierships he won, you know, mm. or like that level of, like how long he was competitive for what period of time. Also, it's hard as an outside back. I guess I know he played fullback and I know he played five eight, but majority of his career is an outside back in rep level anyway. But the, the the standard of competition from like this recent generation, yeah, is absolutely through the roof, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know when you you're throwing guys like Cooper Cronk that will be available soon. You know, John. Um, would Cooper Cronk be an immortal to you? I don't know if he's but, an immortal. Just, oh, it's hard, isn't but, it? But, yeah, but when you look at his resume, when, it's yeah, so good. Like, it is. Yeah. And winning the premierships at both clubs. What he did at the Roosters, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, Cameron Smith. You know, he's not eligible yet. But yeah, I know, I know he's not, but yeah. I'm saying about this this crop of, uh, uh, of people, uh, of players. Like, you know, Thurston there, Inglis. Like, this is... We are we we we're, we're spoiled and we're, we're blessed that we get to, well that, for me personally got to play against some of these guys, but also get to to witness and watch them. I'm sure our listeners would agree. I guess that this is always an interesting chat because you know I heard I read um sorry read about you know Ron Coote and how people were like he should have he should never have missed out and. Like, I, I, I don't know, because I never really got to see him play, and it's mm. not the same. And we judge, you know, the the, the present day we're, we're, as always being the, the best. And, you know, there'd be some people that would look back and go, no, 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 no one will ever be as good as, as Ron Coop. But it, it, it's so hard, I guess. I can only go off the, the people that I've seen, I guess, for the – or played against, like, Slater and JT – they probably both got to be in there, don't they? But then would it be just – like is the very fact of like having an immortal, you've, you you can only pick – you've got to separate your JTs, your Slaters, your Smiths. Yeah. You, you, like, it's so hard though because they were so good yeah, for so long. And what they did at Origins, like the, yeah. the amount of series they won, the dominance that they had over New South Wales. It, it's actually insane. Is this maybe a unique – yeah, period or, for the yeah. immortals where there is a few immortals. Like, if you think about guys playing now, the likelihood is Nathan Cleary becomes an immortal. Mm. Like, just given what he's done at the moment. Apart from him, I can't. I don't really think anyone else at the moment playing in this era right now could be an immortal. Who knows? Reese Walsh could go on and have one of the greatest Payne careers. Haas. Payne Haas could 
could, but yeah, I don't know. Like there was talk for a while that Jason Tamalolo would be an immortal. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. You yeah, know? just the, the way it sort of t- it's tailed off a little bit from where he was at the last few yeah. years. I I probably tend to agree that he was looking like he'd be around that that level of conversation. But like Lockyer, like you speak to people about Lockyer, and like I I. I can't recall if I ever played against him. But like obviously, would have been retired, I think, before he came came over. Yeah, I no, but I think I might have played against him like for the Broncos. Broncos challenge. Challenge. Yeah. But I I mean obviously a huge admirer of what he was doing, but yeah, like you speak to like people like Gordon, mm. they just like bow down yeah. to Lockyer. Yeah. And and with Alfie as well. They yeah. like I think we we asked Webkey, didn't we? You yeah. want the ball to go to him as Alfie. Yeah. Yeah. But then also like guys like Freddie. Yeah. You know, they then he's not an immortal. You the and I think it's good that you make it like yes, you can be a Hall of Fame athlete. Yes, you can be yeah. legend of the game. It's really got to be safe for those guys who have done it at every single level consistently for a long period of time as well. Longevity is so important to it, I think. Yeah, and do you you know, if you put maybe three or four people from like the same sort of team like do you then devalue mm. the currency of being an immortal yeah like it as the I, I know what queensland achieved is like beyond history defining but that this is a question for those people that ultimately will vote do they need to like well from all like all conquering queensland team you can only have one and that would be Cam Smith. Is that how they've got to view it? I think it would be uh, unfair to you know Jonathan what? Thurston. Yeah. And I think... It would be unfair to Billy Slater. Billy like, Slater is so good. And he's re- he revolutionised the, the, well, yeah. the, the foot. He changed how fullbacks yeah. play. And he was so good for so long. I think because of the uniqueness of of that origin period, I think you'll see all three yeah. of those players make it. Yeah, well, you, you, you're probably right. And that, and that is a fair and just argument. Yeah. And, and I think it... Because it probably will never happen again. Probably not. Yeah. What was it? It was eight years in a row. Hmm. How, how much was but it? Then, like, but then you look at how sports go, mate. I can remember watching the Premier League and you'd see people like Alan Shearer, Henri. Yeah. And you think that we'll never see anything like that ever again. Like they are beyond. And then you look to like Ronaldo coming in and you're like, what? Wow. Wow. Like we won't see a goal scorer like him or Messi. And then you look at Haaland now at City and you're like, geez, mm. like he's, 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 he's smashing goal scoring records. And people will say, we'll never see that again. But we said the same about Shearer, yeah. same about Henri. And yeah. the talent pool just keeps getting bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. And, and yeah, standards keep improving. Like we spoke about this on uh, one of the, round table episodes about you know the we obviously these current players they've been subject to to sports science and whatnot but like with ai coming into like training and development and athlete potential like who knows where we could go like you think oh it'll never happen again or we'll never have a player like that again well maybe we're just scratching the surface on people and players capabilities mm. like if we tap into the american market and more and more people start playing our game of rugby league we have the pathway systems over in png that standard just keeps on rising and then you do get an eric harland of rugby league yeah it's such a tough one it is uh, you know what it, it, is i the, think it would be so i just think it would be unfair to billy slater and john Thurston if they're not in it so you <laughs> more billy slater for me if i was yeah. go, i go one billy Two JT, yeah, I think, and I then tend to three agree. GI. If that, I mean, three probably. But, they, but then they, 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 they go. We're probably it's that recency bias because mm. JT also just the two premierships for Jonathan Thurston. Mm. You know, one yeah. with the Bulldogs wasn't really he was just like a, a, a yeah. very role so player in that like team. So that, then only one premiership really as the man on that team. But then do we again on that? Do we get lost in the fact that like? Penrith won three, Melbourne won so many, and Roosters won so many over like a certain time frame. Yeah. Like, do we get, like, 
do we forget that it, or, or the Broncos when they won so many? Do we forget that like most teams only win like one every sort of 10, yeah. 15 years? And he won in that era where like it was a, you know, a t- it's hard to win a premiership if you were outside of the yeah. Melbourne Storm. Very yeah. hard. Like it, it, is that, does that not add to his legacy that he won it at not one of those teams? Yeah. And in origin, he was just unbelievable. Mm. I think, uh, yeah. Like, You've got good. to put those two in, yeah. I think. You've got to put them in. Good and then luck. Cam Smith will obviously be yeah. in when he's there. He's arguably the greatest player of all time. Good luck to the um good luck to the um vo- voters, selectors. I don't know who does it, yeah. yeah. You know, if you need help, we're happy to come and just <laughs> oh, cause confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw some <laughs> spanner just, just in the Just quickly, if you were doing sort of like an English immortal and you had the three greatest English players of all time, I know it's a tough sort of question. Three on the spot. Ooh. Or if you you do more than three. Who, who are like the English immortals? Uh, well, the best player Super League's ever seen is James Roby. Yeah. I don't think that's up for debate. Yeah. You're off to, you're off to England, are you, for him? I am. Yeah. Yes, I'm going uh, tonight, actually. Tonight? How good? Um, James Roby, without a shadow. I think Sam, with what he did over here. And then again, like there's, there's players of yesteryear that just... You know, you think like people like Ellery, mm. like, like, wow, like wow. You'd probably be in the English Immortals, wouldn't you? No, four hundred plus games, no. that level of longevity. No, not even. I'm writing you in. I'm just oh, writing you in. <laughs> All right, let's get on to um, fans, um, fans' questions. Yeah, fans' feelings. All thanks to Tui's. All thanks to Tui's. Time now for this. Fan feelings. Nothing more than How do you feel? Yes, Jimmy, all thanks to Tui's. How do you feel? I feel like a Tui's or two. Love Tui's. Thanks so much for coming on board this year, Tui's. It's been great to have you. And Not available in the UK, so I don't know what I want to drink for the next we'll do, oh, We'll take days. a case with you. We've got a case there. Take a case with you. Give a few to James Roby and... We may as well tell the listeners you're actually going to be catching up with Jack Wellsby yes. while you're there. So make sure you have some twoies for him as well. Yes, I will do. You can show him. You can bring him into Australia. Maybe that could l- be the lure. That could lure him in. Like, they obviously oh. sponsored the Panthers twoies, so maybe you can get him to the Panthers. Jack Wellsby. I don't, he's... <gasps> for Jerome Luai's spot. Ooh. Ooh. That would be exciting. I'm sure he'd come for 850. Maybe he'll come for seven. <laughs> I don't know. I have Bargain. to call him and find out. Yes. If you need a manager, Jack Wells with a buyer, I'll take you on board. <laughs> first ever Australia, uh, first yeah. ever athlete that yeah. we've taken care of. Officially signed. Right. Maybe uh, I'll go over him with a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jack, just uh, can you give us an autograph there, lads? Well, what do they? What do managers normally take? 6%? Don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. Five, we'll do a six. four. We'll do oh, a you're going to undercut. Yeah, yeah, we'll undercut. You're going to upset the industry, Charlie. That's all right. Come for us. We don't really care. <laughs> you're, you're overcharged. You're overpaying these people oh, anyway. Don't you know? start that. All right, first question from rebelsoul.8. Can we get Tyson Frizzell on the show? Be careful what you wish for. I reckon he put our listeners to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> He's a charming guy, you know. And you know what? Tyson's the type of guy that is like, oh, yeah, super friendly, you know, when you're in his team. Yeah. And then he goes somewhere else, forgets you. Does he just yeah, brush you? Yeah. Apparently I'm dead to him. Were you playing so. with him when he was rolling around in the skins with no shorts? You remember how he wore the top, like the the workout skin? I don't, it wasn't the skins, the brand, but, you know, those ones, he wasn't wearing the shorts. He was just running around in, like, the skins. In the game? No, 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 in training. Oh, yeah, yeah. He used to have a weird thing about, yeah. like, that's what he'd wear on captain's run. I think yeah. there was one day he made me turn back to get get them. Oh, so God. we drive down. And he's like, oh, shit. I forgot my, my skin. Like, frizz. <laughs> it's captain's run, mate. You'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't. I've got to do captain's run in them. That like gives the, me the ick, like guys wearing tights with no mm. shorts. Like you got to wear the shorts on. Maybe we'll just bring him on and just ask him that question. Yeah, and then send him off. And then and yeah. you wear skins, just skins for the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll all I, just wear skins I, and see if he picks up on it. Special nighttime episode. Yeah. <laughs> send our listeners to sleep. <laughs> Only joking, Frizz. <laughs> all right, next question from D. Watson Hayes. Love you, Daniel. Any update on the Life After League Foundation, which was announced on Channel 7 Spotlight? Oh, yeah. So uh, the Life After Football Ball Foundation, we are still working away. Uh, I've had some good conversations with the NRL who are looking to support this. Um, for me, I'm just 
the ideas guy, but we're hopeful and planning to start a pilot uh, of this in February. And just how that looks is uh, still, we're still working on the framework, but basically it would be a, a screening and prevention um, th uh, facility for um, former footballers and, you know, obviously the, the financial backing of it, uh, it's going to cost. It's going to cost money, but we feel, um, or the NRL feel that, that this is something that they should be doing. So a bit of screening and prevention, um, and taking people as far down the health road as they possibly can, with a focus on uh, former footballers. What if you partnered up with the clinic and then sort of gave them some free mid rolls in the buy round? Just thinking out here, brainstorming. Yeah, well, well no, but and that, also they'll get heaps of exposure from like the coverage of it as well. Yeah, well, the the, the idea would be Charlie it becomes, um, you know, you you would we would partner with uh, a medical f facility or a healthcare provider. Yeah, um, that would be looking to you know obviously a lot of, um, uh, a lot of those big businesses they they do uh, have you know community projects and and this could be perhaps part of that and a and a win win. So we're still working on it. It's club by clubs, would it be split or just like no, these are the I, dates and then like localized in areas? Where yeah, well, live? well, like, again, the, these are all issues that we're sort of troubleshooting and looking at and just ex deciding exactly what the, the sort of framework would look like, what this sort of screening process would look like and, you know, the referrals, things like that. So I think um, it is important. Um, it's... I'm an ideas person. It's not as easy uh, to get these ideas up and running off the ground. Um, but yeah, we're, we're working on it and I'm still speaking with the NRL and positive we can get a pilot up and running by February. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, get, last question then. Gary Mason Oz, we could play the Shane Richardson drinking game at Christmas. Every time he says, my point about it is you take a sip of two. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be... <laughs> Be a very Merry Christmas, wouldn't it? Yeah. How he looked like Santa Claus as well, Richo, in the last couple of episodes of his big beard, doesn't he? I, I look, I, I know Richo is not everyone's cup of tea and he has those uh repeat phrases, but I think we all do. <laughs> yeah, um, I certainly do. I say yeah, it every, every time. Absolutely. I'm I'm quick to pick up on others. Yeah. But um actually I didn't notice because I'm in the moment there with Richo. With 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 other people you sort of you're not as focused, yeah. like intensely focused on the conversation. I didn't notice it either, like, mm. but notice it back, like listening back. Oh, once, yeah. once you know. Yeah, like now it's like, cause a couple of people yeah. said it, yeah. Well, you, in fact, you, you've said it about some of the people we work with. Ben Dobbin. M. Yeah, if you, ever want to listen, if you ever listen to Ben Dobbin, stay tuned for There's No Two Ways About It. Mm. Plenty to so, get to, so, so much, much to get lots, to. Lots to unpack. <laughs> lots to unpack. Or, we're going to unpack that later. Yeah. It's like, well, let's just unpack it now. Yeah. What do you mean unpack? <laughs> like, it's not a suitcase. <laughs> it's that's not. one of those things that like a lot of media people say isn't it you know yeah. something that we say a lot what's that time now for this when throwing to a segment opener like uh, there's other ways we could do yeah, it but we always just say time now for this and play the twoies jingle yeah well, well it's sometimes those segues in are all quite difficult like, yeah to make it sound natural well now it's time for Charlie. Do you reckon Michael Parkinson was always saying now, ta now, now time for this probably the good the good broadcasters probably think of cleverer ways to bring things in yeah They've probably got like a team of script writers, hundreds so like working for yeah, him. That's true. You know, probably you know he's the pinnacle. Yeah. Speaking Is Parkinson's of, still alive? No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, don't think so. No, I mean, unfortunately he passed away. Rest in peace, Parkinson. Mm. If you are dead, we, <laughs> well, you might not be. A day, day, yeah. he's died. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah. Rest in peace, Parko. Yeah. Uh, Probably time to go over the rock. Ah, uh, it is, isn't it? Oh, what what was the what was the question again? Uh, the heavyweight boxer's liquid breakfast. Yeah, that one's for you. Yeah, the heavyweight boxer's liquid breakfast. So smoothie, Tyson smoothie. Yes, boom, Bang. Ding. Ding, 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 tick, tick. Just to get smoothie, then I was there. Yeah. So you I would have bought myself a Tui's hat to buy yeah. a T-shirt. <laughs> yes. You don't need to because you steal them all anyway. I will say I'm I'm gonna have something for you in the next couple of weeks. Regarding merch, hats, t-shirts, oh. just stay tuned for it. I'm not going to tell you the plan. It's going to be a little bit different to the the first drop we had. Yeah, but um, probably should have spoken about this at the top of the show, shouldn't you? No, well, no, there'll be plenty of time mm -hmm. to talk about it because it's still oh. a couple of weeks away. Still, still a couple yeah. weeks away. Still in yeah. the sort of like the ideation phase. I, 
Is that yeah. a real word? Ideation, ideation. yeah. yeah. What's ideation, it, it means like sort of ideating. So when you ideate, you're sort of like brainstorming. Oh, like the ideas phase. Yeah, the ideas phase, yeah. yeah ideation. Sort of like there's this, we've got a graphic designer at work at the moment mm. designing a sort of a cartoon Ooh. that is going to feature on some of the merch. But just stay tuned for it as well. So I'll start it's going to be really good and it's going to be something that everyone can wear, Ooh. you know, men, women, children, and it's going to be ready in time for Christmas as well. You know, nice. I look forward to that. Cool. Well done on getting your rock busters. The one for the fans. Um, those drugs are the perfect color. Okay. Bar and t-shirt to his cap up for grabs. Yeah. Sounds good. good. All right. We'll catch you all very soon. Thanks for listening to Midweek Matters, Charlie. Thanks for your input and telling us about your stories of being a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apologies. Just quickly, for that. I, I'm. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how much you remember from being four. Well, it's one of my like first memories breaking mm. my leg. I also like the it's yeah. So that I'm I'm sort of I guess it must be a slightly smart person. I don't know, but my brain sort of kicked in earlier. Mm. Like I was reading books when I was two. They had me reading at two. You know, I was doing maths equations at one and a half. Um, and then so obviously my memory kicked mm. in a bit earlier. Yeah. I've even got some other memories like it's in save, England. Save them for next time, yeah, please. <laughs> I can remember when I landed yeah, maybe, in Australia. Maybe, maybe you and Tyson Frizzell. Can get on together, yeah, for a special nighttime edition of the bar. Medita- Medita- Live streamed at two Live in the morning, yeah, yeah, for all the people who need to fall asleep. Right, that's it. See you, mate. <laughs>